back to the Hollow Sky Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Steven. And Kyle. And it's Monday, Hollow Cult. You know what that means. It's the beginning of the work week. We back. We, we back. Are we back. back. Just like that, we're back. Help kind of get you through it. Give you a little bit of motivation. Just to keep trucking. You know the drill. Yeah. Kyle's coming in with another series banger. I think it's going to be... Pretty awesome. Should spark up a lot of provoking thoughts and conversation, hopefully. I I agree with that. I think that will happen. He's going to bring us on the journey of the law of one after we get through the business. So check us out at all social medias, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Dick. Dick talk, wow. Hell yeah. Dick talk, <laughs> Discord, Reddit. Definitely creating that app. <laughs> My bad. We're just going to go ahead and drop the paranormal world and <laughs> open our own app. Straight to that. Uh, yeah, just search up the Hollow Sky on any social medias and we'll be there. If you have a paranormal encounter you'd like for us to feature <laughs> on a future show, Kyle's got the details and hopefully he does a better job than I'm doing right now. Uh, it's definitely easy peasy. All you got to do is check the show notes. All the information's in there. Phone numbers, emails, all that stuff. But... If you'd like to, you can write your story out, shoot it over to the email, which is going to be hollowskypodcast at gmail.com. Me and Steve will then receive that email and create its own episode discussing it. I'm pretty sure that you all want this to happen, so let's make it happen. Flood us with crazy-ass encounters. So we don't have to start dick talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to see dick talk... Then we need we need a bunch of your guys' encounters. Yes. Um, if you'd like to support this dumpster fire of a show, there's plenty of ways you can do it. Hit us up at the Patreon. You can go over there and check it out. You get uh, early shows, ad free shows, coupons to the merch store, extra episodes, all kinds of things. I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's a merch store. Uh, actually, there is hollowskypodcast.com. Got a store over there with a bunch of goodies. Shirts, hats, stickers, cool stuff. Go pick you up some things. Rep the Hollow Cult. You know the drill. Best thing you can do is share the show word of mouth. Put it out there on social media. Share it. Reddit. Share it. Anywhere you're at, share it. Um, just keep keep the ball rolling for the Hollow Cult. We appreciate everybody that puts our name in the hat. You can also go to wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a five-star rating and review. And if I find it, I'll gladly shout you out. Hopefully, I find it and then do that. As I said, today's five-star rating and review comes to us from our friend, Rosemary in the Chives. Rosemary says, it's the value for me. Five stars. Where to start? The live show, the main show, the Discord, the family vibe, the hosts themselves. There are too many good things about Hollow Sky, and they offer it for free. I'll sign up for the Patreon when I can afford it. Steve and Kyle go above and beyond to bring quality entertainment. My bad for taking so long to send a five-star review. Love you guys and all that you do. Rosemary, thanks so much for leaving us the five-star rating and review. Cool to see you. Active member in the Discord. Yeah, she's OG. OG member of the Hollow Cult. Thanks for the kindness. We definitely appreciate it. Hope all is well, Rosemary. Yeah, just out here doing our best. That's all we can do. Making a difference. That's all we can do. Small differences. Yeah, and I think this, I think this, uh, at least opening episode, I can't speak much for anything else because I'm kind of doing this in real time as I go through all this information. But I think the, I think the first episode here might, might do a little bit of good for some of our listeners. I'm, I'm here for it. We talked a little bit of it, about it off the air. But I'm ready to get ripping. Yeah. So let's get it. All right, let's 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 see what we got going on here. The Law of One. This story in particular involves Donald Elkins. Uh, Donald was a engineer, a pilot, and a paranormal researcher. Don went to the Un- University of Louisville. He had three degrees in engineering. And after serving in the Korean War or later serving in the Korean War, then later ending back up in Kentucky, 
where he became interested in UFOs. Don created a group to essentially meditate with and also attempt in contacting extraterrestrials. The idea for this came from a UFO contact group in Detroit, which was the experiment that proved successful in 1963. He published the report, Telepathy Data Collected by Extraterrestrial Communication, which is what the report would be. One of the main members of this group was a woman by the name of Carla Record. She became a channel of the entities during her time in the group. From here, we begin to unfold the entirety of the story because they end up connecting with an entity named Ra, claiming to have arrived at Earth around 11,000 years ago. Ra arrived with the intent of helping the people of Earth expand their mental evolution. Apparently, he failed in this attempt and removed himself from the planet. However, he has been keeping, by, by his standards and his explanation, he's been keeping an eye on the planet. Oddly, though, after years of this work, Don would begin to develop mental health issues and ended up deleting himself. Oh, yeah, so it Damn. doesn't it doesn't end too well for Don. Uh, Carla, on the other hand, she was interested because she or she was interesting because she became interested in the subject and through a friend who ended up joining Don's meditation. I wonder if his his contact with extraterrestrials are what led to his. Undoing. So that's speak. that's uh, <clears throat> also what I'm wondering about. As of right now, in the research, it doesn't elaborate on anything, but I'm curious to see where this goes. Because someone of that, not to say that people can't have mental breaks and do terrible things, but beings that we've looked into so much in the alien world, the paranormal world, Untimely deaths, brutal deaths like this, always, at least for me, have a red flag. That's what Where I you're kind of like, eh. I'm like, if this guy's making leaps and bounds in extraterrestrial communication, <laughs> I feel like right. he may be a target right. for some three-letter agencies. Also agree with that statement. Especially in the end when you, you start to digest some of the contacts that they had. But back to Carla, she said for, and I find this extremely interesting because for the first six months, she she literally says it was hard for her to keep a straight face because each of these meditation sessions were closely contained in hopes to recreate the results they've they've had before. But as the sessions would take off, the other people in the group would start making weird noises like slurps, tongue clicks, grunts, all types of just utterly bizarre noises to which she would naturally want to respond with laughter. Like this has got to be a fucking joke, right? That's weird. Right. But it shows me that Carla, although interested in the subject material, she was also highly skeptical. One day, all of it seemingly changed for her though. It was almost as if they were (laughs) like my conspiracy brain. Like, like they were sent in there to kind of derail the whole uh, scenario, you know? Like, Carla's focused trying trying to meditate to make communication with the extraterrestrials and why everybody else is in there trying to cause a distraction. Also, well, to clear up, I, I do understand what you're saying, but to clear up, when she first started messing with these groups, she wasn't the contactee. Oh, so this this is prior any experience in the situation. This is her first time entering into the group. And apparently it takes upwards of 10 years for her to actually finally start to get into these situations. Right. So it's bizarre that she sticks around for that fucking long. I can whenever she enters this this group and she's like, what in the hell is going on? Dude, I can't imagine doing something for 10 years with no results. Right. 
Right. But but people within the meditation group, they do have results. It's just not happening to Carla. Yeah. But like I, like I was saying, it shows me that Carla, although interested, she's highly skeptical. And one day a contactee from Detroit shows up and participates in their session. Almost immediately, the new contactee had success and began to speak. And they speak, why don't you speak the thoughts that you're that are on your minds? We are attempting to use you as instruments of communication, but you are all blocked through your fear that you will not be speaking the proper words. After this, it seemed to open the floodgates. Almost everybody in the group within the first month was able to produce information. So it's like, it's almost like to a degree, these people are meditating and they're getting messages, but they're, they're not sure if they actually are like, they're questioning their own sanity to a degree. So they're not wanting to voice anything because they don't want people to think they're fucking crazy. Yeah. Which is, it's kind of, it's kind of understandable. Um, now you have to wonder, did this new con- contactee help release their minds or did it almost implant this this false switch? One to where people could feed off of and just start to use it as a method of being important, so to speak. But regardless of all that, Carla still couldn't produce anything. She's having a hell of a time. Even after a year, she still couldn't, she just could not make contact. Don ends up taking a a kind of bizarre route, but one that I think all of us can slightly appreciate. He started to hit up seances and that sounds kind of bizarre in the, like connecting the two, this, the alien contactee with seances, draw me the connection here because I don't see it. But one of the questions they had were how do UFOs materialize and dematerialize so quickly and the fact that they can do this at all. Don decides to start hitting up seances and witness firsthand a materialization that essentially convinces him. He doesn't care about proving shit to anybody else. He's like, I'm going to hit up... And Carla says he literally does. He just... He compiles a massive list of anyone that is capable of hosting seances, and he goes to every single one of them up until they they meet a, a particular guy, and they they're like, he's like, oh shit, like this dude's. I I feel like this dude is legit. This is the dude that I'm gonna start participating with in order to further my research. And I, I almost have to laugh because it's ironic to say the least. So as they're literally going and searching for someone to provide a decent materialization, Don and Carla are talking because she's, she's actually unaware of what's going on and what is about to happen because Don takes her with him to a man named Reverend Tingley. As they sat there waiting for it to begin, Don starts telling Carla, you know, Carla, you're great for this field. I really, I remember, I'm, I am just uh, so happy you're here. And she's she's kind of like, okay, why? Like, why, why are you here? And he says, well, it's because, honestly, it's because you're so gullible. And at first, that that almost sounds like an insult. Yeah, I was going to say, damn. (laughs) But. He has a meaning behind it. He says, you take things as they happen and at face value. Therefore, you don't null your results right away. You experience this and then later on, and you you take all of it in as it happens. You're You're not trying to instantly disprove everything. You're just absorbing it. Later on, you will then slowly start to analyze the situation and try to break it down. And he says, a desire for proof will inevitably lead to null results and voided experiments. An open mind, one willing to be gullible, leads its 
possess her to a kind of subjective and personal certainty, which does not equal proof as it cannot be systematically reproduced in others. And I feel like that's a that's a a really interesting way to look at those situations. Yeah, I mean, I kind of get that. For sure. Because what what is proof in the paranormal realm? You know, if it was provable, it wouldn't be unexplained anymore. Exactly. You know what? Yeah. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be paranormal. You almost have to go in there with a sense of skeptical gullibility, you know, because if you if you immediately you see that you see that in on the forums and on the socials, people that will meet you could post the best fucking picture of a Sasquatch and people immediately like that's not They'll real. They'll just rip it apart. Yeah, that's not real. That's fake. That's fake. Yep. Get a, give us proof. Give us proof. Well, what well, well, what what would it take? Yeah, for like you this, to believe this, this is my proof. Yeah. I took the picture, asshole. Yeah. And there's they still don't believe you. No, but it's photoshopped. It's AI. Yeah, totally makes sense. Uh but back to the séance. So they go to Reverend Tingley's spot and like Carla's describing this and and it just the visual I get is just fucking bizarre. She's like it's bare it's almost like you're sitting in an old garage. 20 pe- 26 people show up and like I picture this this old uh cinder block building with the metal folding chairs in there and 26 people show up and the good reverend and and by the description it almost sounds like he goes behind a curtain in the room which is kind of suspect. It's Wizard of Oz. Shit. I dude, I literally have it written right there. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and but they start this off with the Lord's Prayer. Not long as they're sitting there, a solid full body apparition appears in the room. And it's it's known or lets itself be known as sister. She actually, and, and this this sister actually wished to speak to Carla and thank her for helping Don. And she's thanking him or thanking her because Don now now gets to come and find out that Don's mother was the ghost that appeared, because Carla didn't have any friends that were nuns. But in Don's family, his mother was known as Sister. Uh, that would so be, that that's would be weird in its own right. Heavy. And heavy. And you want to talk about convincing Don that the Reverend's legit and able to host these seances. Well, that's one surefire way to do it. I would love to be a part of something like that. I would love Same. to sit in on a seance. I'm Googling, like, where can I go to be a part of a seance? Apparently not anywhere around here. So from here, they keep going to these seances and keep seeing ghosts appear. One in particular appears and is known as Master, which is fucking weird. That is weird. The During this uh, encounter, the room grows cold, and the ghost gave... Carla and Don, and I'm assuming everybody else in there, an inspirational message. They told them that he would touch them to show them that he is real, to which he then does. (laughs) Carla says that as he touches her, the force was actually strong enough to leave a bruise on her arm. He also walked through them to show that he was not of this density. After this, he blesses everybody in the room, walks back through Carla and Don again, and she describes it almost like he he melts into the floor, into the small pool, and then it then it just kind of evaporates and goes away. They would go on to do this type of research for years. And apparently after 12 years of doing this, Don finally at this point was like, Carla, you've been around for so long. 
why don't we start focusing on you and start getting you tuned in as a channeler? So as they they work on tuning Carla, in 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 and of the course, they, they kept researching and kept finding weird connections and oddities. Like with the... Uh, one of the circumstances they end up researching is the mental metal b- bending. So, the, like the people that can bend spoons with their minds. Oh, Apparently, awesome. I need to practice. Right. Apparently, this happens a lot after UFO encounters, more so with people who were abducted. They seem to have an ability to bend spoons and all types of other stuff. Which at this point makes no sense to me. I'm like, what in the fuck? Why? Why does this happen? Apparently, we get a connection later on as the book foreshadows this. But the only thing that makes sense is maybe because the way that every, almost every, not every encounter, but there are shitloads of them out there that elaborate on these beings communicating through telepathy. So is it possible that through this this telepathy, it it kind of opens a door within the mind of the abductee that now almost triggers, I guess it would be like a, a telekinetic ability at that point? I feel... Yeah, I mean, I feel like once once you get into certain aspects of, like, the consciousness, I feel like a lot of that shit can be unlocked in there. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like our consciousness, again, I say it all the time, is like a defense mechanism. It's, it's a gate. It's a gate to keep us from a lot of these other things, but it also probably keeps a lot of like arcane knowledge locked away. And once you get in there, you start meditating and doing all those like other things that we speak about, um, hallucinogenics and, um, lucid dreaming, you start to unlock some of those gates and probably unlock some of these abilities that we've had kind of tucked away for so long. And it does kind of fall in suit with that. Yeah. But once you make those connections, maybe they have the ability to unlock it as well. And then you turn into Magneto. And then you turn into Magneto and no spoons are safe. I'm I'm okay with that. I'm trying to turn into Magneto. <laughs> Let's fucking go. But during these communications with these ETs, reincarnation kind of keeps getting brought up. And they claimed it was one of the most important concepts that we need to understand which is weird considering just the other day now keep in mind i'm writing this episode after our last night shift so we we talk about reincarnation and everything on that night shift episode so it's kind of fucking weird that the very next day i'm digging into this and reincarnation is apparently something very important that we're supposed to understand we we discussed on the night shift how we did I didn't understand what would be the purpose of of the continuation of reincarnating to learn lessons that we can't ever retain because we can never fully most of us anyways there are circumstances of course but most of us cannot retain any lessons that we would have learned in our past lives so why why keep reincarnating it doesn't make sense to me and that's what was brought up on the night shift but i posed the question you know like i said how are we supposed to learn each of these lessons even though we continuously forget but as luck ends up intermingling into our lives ironically enough (laughs) this this research kind of in a roundabout way answers my question the phenomena it's acknowledging weird. you, bro. It's weird, right? So once again, you have to to be conscious and, and paying attention. But I feel like even with this lineup, I could have easily forgotten my previous qu- 
question of reincarnation and just moved on with the episode. Really not absorbed and latched on to what kind of unfolds here. Anyways, Don talks about how when a child is born, some children can, and, and this is kind of a weird analogy for me. It doesn't fully sell it for me, but his analogy is some children, when they're born, they can be terrified of thunderstorms. While other children born or other people in the family, they're completely fine with the thunderstorm. Which sounds, like I said, very minuscule. And to be honest, I wasn't really impressed with the analogy. It kind of bothered me more than anything. However, as it keeps going, things get a little bit more interesting. On one example, you you have this young child. The child has horrible allergies. He's one of them people that when the grass is cut, they, they can't even fucking go outside. They can't smell flowers. During the springtime, they basically just stay inside. They don't even go outside. Miserable. 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 So one day, for whatever reason, it doesn't elaborate on why this happens, but they they go, this same child, which I'm assuming at at a point, I'm assuming they're about a teenager at this point. They end up going to a hypnotic regression specialist. While doing so, the young boy describes his long life living in England. While living there, he inherited a large estate and overall was a very solitary man. He avoided all contact with people as much as possible. I feel that. Right. (laughs) The only thing he took enjoyment was, was working in his garden. So the hypnotist asked the boy to call on his higher self. When the boy does this, he asks his higher self if the lesson of putting people first and other things second had been learned. So essentially, if I did a shit job communicating that, in his life in England, he prioritized his garden over everything. He's not trying to fuck with anybody, right? Yeah. So as a lesson of, I guess I'm assuming it's, it's, I don't know that I would call it a lesson. I kind of feel like it's a punishment. I was just going to say, it's a punishment. (laughs) You don't get to enjoy the garden now. Right. So That's whack. Yeah, as he's born again, he has severe allergies now, which would refrain him from doing the garden thing anymore. Which is kind of sucky. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But during the, the regression here, the higher self gets, you know, asked, hey, is the lesson of putting people first and other things second learned? And the higher self replies, like, yeah, I, I, we think it is. And then the boy, they, they kind of draw the boy out of his regression. And while, while he was in regression with the higher self, they they asked that question, you know, if if the lesson had been learned and now is it possible for the allergies to be healed? Like I said, the higher self, yes, we can, we can, we can go this road now. Once the boy wakes up from the trance, the hypnotist actually had a marigold plant on his piano and he goes over there and he scrapes some of the pollen off of the piano. And without saying anything, he walks over to the boy who, like I said, is now awake from, from aggression and he blows the pollen into the boy's face at this point the boy is freaking out and he's pissed because he's understandable yeah he's crazy allergic to the pollen right however at this point the pollen has no effect on the kid so seemingly just because of a hypnotic regression now he's cured of all of his allergies which is and even if you remove the oddity of the higher self and the lesson and the reincarnation, the fact that that cures it makes no fucking sense at all. The whole yeah, the whole thing is so so crazy to me. I never, I guess I never really looked in too much to multiple lives and reincarnation and like I've heard the theory about learning lessons in this life 
and the lessons you don't learn, you have to relearn and this, that, and the other. But I never really put together something as trivial as having allergies in this life being a lesson on how you lived your past life. Right. That's fucking crazy. It's crazy because, like, allergies could kind of be considered minuscule in a grand scheme of things. Yeah, it's like everything that makes you question everything, you know, that... Like my like my fear of heights is that some kind of like lesson I failed to learn in my past life. Apparently so. What the f- what did the, what was I doing in my last life? You were probably jumping off shit that you weren't supposed to jump off of. Yeah, I was probably doing parkour. Uh, that guarantee that was it. <laughs> Guaranteed. Uh, yeah, that's why my knees are fucked up. Yes. <laughs> no more parkour, Steve. <laughs> well, they. They did a good job because I've put my parkour uh, career to rest this <laughs> life by yourself. Thank you. <laughs> so, interesting enough, by kind of going through this, this regression story, in a roundabout way, it kind of answers my question that actually all of the lessons are retained. However... They're retained by the higher self, which means in the the ultimate afterlife or the evolution of yourself, you will be able to call on these life lessons. But if you keep expanding that thought, the core of my question is actually still unanswered. Even if you learn all these lessons and evolve into, let's say, a superior being of light and have all this this knowledge and all all these experiences... To what end? Why would you need to learn all these lessons to transcend? Because one would assume that these lessons somehow still need to be of use to you when you transcend. Right? Yeah. I'm trying to make it make sense in my brain. And I, I kind of try to do my own analogy here. It may not be the best, but I write in a roundabout way. If you look at it like this, you have a you have a city full of upper-class people who are, in fact, just the perfect representation of man. On the outside of the city, beyond its walls, you have people that dwell in the woods. We'll call them the savages. They don't understand your definition of forgiveness. They don't understand you can give resources to your neighbor just because. So long story short, the savages aren't being let in because they haven't learned your ways. Therefore, you keep them barred from your version of the Garden of Eden. So it's like, I'm just trying to say that it's kind of fucked up. And if it, if it's just that existence, if it's just like, here's bliss, but in order to experience bliss, you have to learn all this fucking garbage. Yeah. You have to suffer. Yeah. You have like, I feel like in the grand, there, there has to be a grand scheme. There has to be, a reason why we would need to learn all this shit, you know, because it is, is it just a city full of perfection where the rules inside the city are that strict? Like Steve, you need to learn that you have to put others before you, you have to learn to share your resources. You have to learn to do all this stuff or you can't get in my city. Yeah, or maybe, or maybe when you reach that high of a plane, you don't have to have any rules in effect because everybody is, I don't know, everybody's so... Isn't it a weird question to try to sit and figure out in your head? Yeah, like, I don't know. And like like you said, to what end? What what does it matter if we all make it to that point? Like, why, what does... Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, why why would... Why would any of these beings give a shit if more people make it to that point? Right. And I mean, outside of, I mean, with all these lessons, like once we transcend, once we, we move on to the next phase of whatever we have going on, like the best my brain eventually comes up with is, do we turn into like angels or guardians or people that help others traverse these life lessons, like 
traverse this this landscape of like, hey, dude, here's your path. Like you gotta you gotta walk this way, homie. Like it's good over here, and you definitely want to be over here, but we got to get you through this shit first. It still doesn't really answer my question, but like like in your in your mind, I hope everybody listening is trying to like rifle through that and it, it is just so hard to come up with a, a a a great explanation as to why we still like why we need these lessons and it's weird to me that they're like hey in order in order for you to reach reach the pinnacle you're going to suffer yeah a lot that that's that feels like horseshit to me I agree. Like, get out of here with that. I agree to to a certain extent. Um, I don't know though. I don't know because uh, the best way to learn a lesson is to experience the negative side of it, where you're like, "All right, I'm not touching that hot wire fence anymore because I know that's gonna shock the shit out of me and it hurts." Yeah, but there's, there's, I don't know. I just feel like there still needs to be a reason. Yeah. Why just, we have all these lessons. Why it, it is a repeat process. If I don't know, just the the whole thing feels weird to me. It feels real like like lesser than thou kind of vibe to it. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see we'll weird. see how it, it unfolds. So from there we we start diving into messages received from an entity that is called I, I'm just gonna say Hatan. It's spelled H A T O N N, but I'm just I'm just saying Hatan. Feels Hatani to me. Yeah, I find I find this interesting mostly because it does give answers to questions people have asked before. I feel like this information may have a lot of these answers throughout this process. Of course, you don't have to believe any of these answers. Nor should you, to certain degrees, definitely always have your suspicions when dealing with uh, these subjects or any communication with beings beyond our existence. <laughs> so, pin pinpoint that statement. Yeah, yeah, you should definitely, definitely uh, hold them to the fire, so to speak. But um, Hatan and his communication explains why UFOs has been, have been seen for many years. It's it's similar to us in a way, at least the analogy that he uses. So when a country on our planet has a large disaster, other countries will try to send aid to help that country get through its travesty, right? Apparently, that's what these UFOs are to us. They're life rafts. They're aid. Hatan says that they've been contacting people of Earth for an extremely long time. He states that people who want to help and communicate will be contacted, mostly because we have the understanding and desire to make said contact. I find this extremely interesting, especially for for the current time, because how often do we all hear the phrases, people are becoming more aware. People are waking up. Yeah. And then you coincide that with all the UFOs that are being talked about in modern news. It's fucking weird. It's a weird connection. It is interesting. Because usually usually the two, albeit in, in the weird and esoteric, they usually don't go hand in hand. Right. You know what I mean? When you hear people people waking up, you don't attribute it to like UFO sightings and shit. Yep. But looking at it from this point of view, that is weird. It is it is weird. And keep in mind, I believe that most of these contact conversations were were logged in the nineties. Oh yeah. But uh Hatan he also he also speaks a lot about desire. And the desire to make contact, which if you if you look at it from a different angle, kind of also sounds like intent, which we talk a lot about. Yeah, 100%. Right? He also talks about how what they're doing is self-generating. As more and more people desire contact and receive it and then pass it on to others, 
they then will be tuned into a state of thinking and understanding with their ETS vibrations, which will help them be able to receive contact. So essentially, by me having contact... That's creepy. ...and experiencing something, I tell Steve about it. I'm like, dude, you're never going to believe this. I had contact. I, I'm talking to these beings. It's just fucking crazy. By me doing that, it now tunes Steve in to the same treatment. It's like, he is now eligible for contact. Yeah, it's like a virus. It is like a virus. Like a mimetic, or like a thought virus. Yes. Which is, which is, I don't, that, that almost feels predatory to me. Kind of, in a roundabout way. Because you're putting people on, on a level to make contact that essentially might not, and might not have any desire to do right. it. You know what right. I mean? And that could be from, I'm going to, I'm going to try to give them the benefit of the doubt. It could just be that they don't fully understand the human race. That there are things that we're not okay with. That is right. It is wild that all they have to do is like put a thought, and then they just let humans do human stuff. Yeah, and it takes it takes on its own. Yeah, and I I literally write down the same thing. They call it self generating. We could call it a virus. Oh yeah, it's like like those um, stupid chain emails that you get. Yes. Open this up. Send it to ten people. I mean, they don't do it anymore. That's showing my age. Like. In the 2000s, you'd get them all the time. It just kind of spreads like wildfire. Yeah. And another thing that I, I kind of choose to point out here is, to play devil's advocate, if the the good aliens can use this method, well, you know the other side can can also do that. Which Best believe it. Which, who does that remind you of? For me, it reminds me of Saturn and the Black Cube. Yeah. Right? And then another similar situation in Tony's latest episode of The Confessionals, he had a guest on speaking about the Brotherhood of the Snake, how if you would make sacrifices to these serpents, it would show you the future. With that information, they would send things out to people on a righteous path. So if you were meant to be a warrior and inflict chaos upon their agenda, they would beat destiny to the punch and start sending forces out early to interrupt your path. Which brings me to the point of both sides being able to use these types of tools. That's cr- like the idea of that is so f- fucking bonkers. To Crazy. Me. Not to mention, we've also had a potential operative from Tony's show that said we are meant to do this forever. Yeah. <laughs> so sprinkle that on top. Like, the idea of metaphysical warfare makes my brain hurt. Bro, the idea that essentially you could you your destiny could be that of Michael the Archangel and the forces of of evil essentially could see that somehow in the future and instead of allowing you to peak and, and get to that position in time, in your destiny, they're like, fuck that. We're going to go ahead and start sending things to this person's path to hopefully knock them off that path before they even get there. Yep. That's crazy. Just steady sending distractions. That's crazy. It makes you wonder, like, how many times that happens in in just in our lives, for, for lack of a better uh, example. Yeah. How many times that happens and we don't notice. Yeah. Oh or, yeah, absolutely. Or we don't attribute it to something. Cause I mean, how many, how many people have messaged us saying that there, that there are people and forces out there trying to send negative stuff our way, trying yeah. to knock us off our path. You right. know, we heard, we've, we've heard it well more than once. I can yeah. put that out there. Yeah. And it's, it's, it is just, it is a hard thing to wrap your brain around but at the same time it's not because you're like well that makes sense you know you just never i mean you never really think about it yeah. at the time when you're dealing with stuff like maybe maybe this could be a direct result is of of somebody out there trying to trying to make our way harder make it make it more difficult make us make us stray from the path 
Yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy. And I, I feel like the majority of this episode is so fucking relevant to everything that we talk about and and have talked about for a hot minute now because I've posed the question a few times in the night shift about making contact with said ETs, I was thinking the same thing. Right? I was thinking exactly the yeah. same thing. And it it it's not like I'm I'm exactly suggesting something, but it's super weird to sit and read all this when just yes, you know, yesterday as I wrote this a while back on the night shift, someone in the chat kept saying, you know, Kyle's evolving. Uh, ironic timing to say the least, because like they they literally say a ton, and these these ETs say a, a way to speed up process um, in making contact with them and and evolving evolving your way of thinking. Just doing that alone will help you become in tune and speed up all like that entire process. It is. And it is weird that they take that and they, they like use desire and intent because when I think about it, like in, uh, on the outside, would it be cool to see a UFO in my brain? Yeah, it would be cool as fuck. But inside, like I have an innate fear Yes. Of whatever they are. So exactly. I really, while I would, in theory, like to see one, I don't really have any desire yeah. to see one. Yeah. But think, keep that in mind, and then I know it's not a perfect correlation, but so you have that, right? That exact thought right there. Now pair that with you driving down the road and you really want to hear a specific song. You're like, man, I would really love to hear this song. And then what happens? It comes on. It comes on. Yep. But that's because, like you were just saying, the desire with, like, that desire is fucking real. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, it is It is solidified. There's nothing, there's no fear associated with it. It is solid. It is there. Yep. That shit is weird. It is weird. Because like you said, I do believe that what you said is is probably 90% of the fucking reason why people who try to do this stuff don't have any results. Yep. Because there is that lingering doubt. There is that fear. There is a lot of that stuff that lingers inside deeper than we realize that actually almost forms a barrier now. You can't cross that barrier. Yep. Because the desire isn't the desire slash intent is isn't as authentic as it should be, yeah, or it's just just it's overshadowed by the fear. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Interesting. It's, it's weird, dude. So Hatan also claims that he is part of the Confederation of Planets, and that these beings are in service of the Infinite Creator. They go on to apologize for not being able to step onto our soil and help us kind of firsthand. His reasoning for not being able to do this kind of actually makes sense. They can't do this because a large portion of the world just isn't fucking ready for that type of contact. He's like, it would it would it would be more of a disservice to do this at do that at this point. Now, given, you know, like I said, this is back in the 90s. I can't help but ask, have things changed? Because we're seeing a lot more of UFO chatter in everyday life. We're seeing more UFOs than than just completely, than you would ever would have thought would have happened. So now I ask the question, are, are we getting ready for the unimaginable? And this is, is this what everybody has continuously talked about. Is this the age of enlightenment? The age of Aquarius? Is it true? Is it, are we on the verge of that legitimately? Catastrophic disclosure. Catastrophic disclosure. Um, Hatan also speaks on the communication aspect of all this because it's at the heart of, of, Telepathy, you have to 
See everyone not as brothers, sisters, friends, family. You have to see everyone as one. All from the creator, therefore you are the creator. Atan and his race can read all of our minds almost instantaneously. And he realizes that most of us on this planet would see this as a clear form of infringement. But he's like, we do not. They see, because, and it makes sense. I'm not saying I exactly agree with it, but it, he justifies it in a way of, he's like, listen, I, I, like his previous statement, I don't, Steve, I don't see you as a brother. I don't see you as a family member. I see you as me. Therefore, your thoughts are my thoughts, and my thoughts are your thoughts. Does that make sense? Because the way they view uh, life forms in the universe, they're all connected. Yeah. Right? I get it, but... That's only cool if I can also read your <laughs> thoughts. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. But it is it is an interesting explanation, one that we really kind of haven't heard before when we've, we've meddled in these types yeah. of situations. So I, I did think it, to a degree, it kind of makes sense, you know. And so for their understanding, it's, it's nothing to, like, there isn't anything to be embarrassed about. There isn't anything to be angry about because like I said, your thoughts are their thoughts, which is a, it is, it is weird to consider that. I'm never going to be able to transcend because I'll never not find any of these beings, not sus as fuck. <laughs> That, that is what I'm going to be forever. I do, I do feel that. I'm going to be forever in this loop of not evolving because like, hey, bro, I have permission to read your thoughts because they're also my thoughts, but you can't read my thoughts because you're not, you're not there yet. But we don't know that. We don't know that we can't read their thoughts to a degree. Obviously, you'd have to reach some point uh, mentally. Or something to that degree, right? I I feel like that shit's got to be fifty fifty. Oh, for, I mean, I'm not I'm not disagreeing. And, but I'd be like, all but right. I'm not. I'm also not trying to hear your thoughts. My head's crowded enough. I don't need any more yeah. shit going on up there. I feel that. But I'm gonna say, if Bro's reading my thoughts and he's like, "Hey, once you hit once you hit level fucking forty five over here, then you will get to read my thoughts," and I'd be like, "All right, well." Until I hit level forty five, <laughs> you stay the fuck out of my, my head. Shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel that. I feel <clears> that. Uh, it's also it's also really bizarre the way he speaks about the creator. It reminds me dead on of God, which begs the question for me: Did Hatan and the Confederation of Planets attempt to make contact ages ago? And when they did this, when they attempted contact ages ago, did someone then translate all of this into the Bible? Religions. Because it, this is a direct quote from the book or from the information in the book. It says, "My friends, it may seem to you that a thought of nature, there than one of love and brotherhood." might be a thought generated, not of our creator. This is not possible, my friends. All thought that is generated is generated by the creator. All things that are generated are generated by the creator. He is all things and is in all places and of, of the consciousness and all of the thought that exists is the thought of our creator. His infinite number of parts all have free will and all may generate in a way they choose. All of his parts communicate with all of creation in his entire and infinite sense. I feel like I, I just read that out of the Bible. Oh, yeah, it's scripture as hell. Right? That was probably not the right euphemism to use. Scripture is 
all get out. Yeah, it it definitely is though. It it one hundred percent has yeah. Bible vibes. Makes you wonder which which came first, you know right? I mean? Right, and that's that's another thing to consider. You know, in in and I'm not, I'm not just because this is what we do. But you you could pose the argument that Don and Carla fabricated an entire series of events loosely based on a religious background, assuming they had religious background, right? That that could be a possibility. However, I don't I don't think that's the case, but I throw it out there. Um, it almost like why? Right? No, you I know? agree. I agree. I agree. But you could definitely see someone making that argument oh, somewhere yeah. in the oh, yeah. in the field of all of this. Oddly enough, they seem to be trying to change our way of thinking, stating that they're reaching out to more of the isolated areas in hopes that we upgrade our way of thinking because over time we have essentially placed our minds within a box and essentially lost our way losing our way in connection with the creator and their way of life is what it seems to me but i do agree i do agree to a certain extent that we've definitely lost our fucking way in in more than one direction, uh, I'm I'm sm- I'm also smart enough to sit here and understand this from different angles, but I d- I don't know that this is this is a doom and gloom si- situation. I know none of this sounds doom and gloom, but you always have to consider you always have to consider manipulation, which I know Steve he sees that right. I would love to be proved wrong. <laughs> I I personally don't quite yet feel a, a big hand of manipulation here, simply because of like I'm I'm reading what what is supposedly Hatan's direct words, and they don't feel as deceiving as some of the communication, like in the Bledsoe case. They don't feel that way yet. Because you guys are getting, essentially, in the way that I'm writing this, you're getting my first reaction to everything that I'm reading. And, of course, I'm trying to condense things down because there is so much information. But as of right now, I don't feel a a large manipulated attempt yet. But Hatan asks that... We remember what they've brought us. Also, the next time we are backed into a corner... This is fucking weird to me, guys. The next time we are backed into a corner by the circumstances within our illusion of the physical existence, we must remember what we've learned and to not forget what we've worked so hard to obtain. You can choose at any time to alter your needs and desires within the physical illusion to our being within the creation of the Father. If our objectives lie within the physical illusion, it will be necessary for you to be subject to the laws which prevail within said illusion. If our desires can be altered by the application of what we are learning, which will lift us into the creation of the infinite one, then we may have a chance to have a lot more ability to remove ourselves from the corners this illusion backs us into. Now, after reading that, and once again, for those that had listened to the last night shift, which, like I said, for me at the time of writing this was yesterday, which isn't the case now, but tell me that doesn't ring true because... When me and Steve were talking, there was a section of the show where we started essentially complaining about work and about how this isn't li- how life is supposed to be. We, we were talking about being like literally being backed into a fucking corner. Yeah, yeah. verbatim. And it was, it was so bizarre to me to read that and go, what the fuck? Yeah, that's weird. It's a weird phenomena acknowledging you, acknowledging it. It, dude, it's so it's crazy. Not to mention, to to a degree, 
you know, it, it also rings to the Brotherhood of the Snake and the hidden knowledge, keeping because he says he specifically says, remember what you've learned. But I sure as fuck don't remember what that is, right? So yeah. I feel like there's a level of hidden knowledge here that everybody speaks about. I feel like there's a level of the the matrix or the simulation that people speak so frequently about. Hell, it even borderline brings back egress to me. You know, with 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 cuz egress being to exit and he's like Hatan is essentially speaking about you need to figure out how to not only manipulate the illusion but also get past the illusion. So there's a lot of just these subtle connections that I keep sparking off in my brain as I'm reading this. And like I said, it, it it's just, there's just so many connections that it, it is hard to, to explain. It's hard to tell you how I feel about this. It's just bizarre to sit and think about this first statement presented in the book how at the time of writing this i'm i'm confused about it i'm conflicted because writing these long episodes is hard on me because i have to double back or double time it and write back to back to back which is hard to do in a short time span also coupled with the fact i don't i don't like to miss any drops it's not about anything other than my own values but to sit and think about how I chose to push this forward because like I said, there was a section when I first started reading this, I was kind of like, man, like I just came out of a, a series. Am I, am I really prepared to jump back into another one? And literally after the night shift, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. Whatever. Fuck it. And I do. And now I'm here, you know, I, I think about I think about what has been created on, on Steve and I's journey. What it actually means. If everyone out there who interacts with us on a daily basis is honest and has truly been touched by this podcast and the experiences and insights we've brought forth, to sit and ponder how how one small pebble tossed into the sea can create these ripples which keeps moving and moving and moving creating something of pure intent creating out of nothing a group of people that honestly pull for each other the path we walk it just feels so important at times like i, I couldn't sit and begin to tell you why i feel that but i truly i got honestly i feel that i speak for myself and, and, and need to remember that I, I lose sight of things from time to time, you know, as everybody does. But when I refocus like on this episode, it, it's just, it's essentially so fucking powerful. I'll never understand how seemingly non-connected things evolve into these moments that we're all kind of experienced together where, like I, like I was saying, these, 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 like, what are the fucking odds that a conversation that was logged in the fucking nineties is relevant to what Steve and I talked about on the last night shift, which for this, for me reading this and experiencing this and writing this was yesterday. Yeah. Third, like it, it, it is weird whenever you break it down and put it like that. Almost like it was 30 years in the making. Dude. Setting itself up for this moment. And that's kind of what I, strange. what I meant about like going through this whole fucking, this rant. Like it, it is just, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Like, like, is it destiny? Is it, is it us walking the path that Hatan and Ra and the Confederation of Planets has, has the intention of, you know? And when you, I mean, when you think about Charlie saying we're destined to do this forever, dude. Hey, that means we're never ever gonna learn our lessons. 
ever. Because we're going to be here still trucking. But it's... Well... Oh, man. I don't want to fucking jump ahead, but I do want to jump ahead. <laughs> because, like, to that statement, there's a tie-in in the next episode. And it could it could actually result in a constant repeat on... Unintentional repeat. I'll put it that way. Like, it, it, it wasn't supposed to happen, but because... So essentially, picture this, Steve. You're 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 a dude on a mission. That I am. You get sent out to wherever your mission takes place, and if you do not complete your mission, you will then be forced to repeat said mission. Hmm. So I know that's extremely vague. But to a, to a degree, that could be what has happened to some of us. Interesting. We came from a time to here to help people. And because we couldn't quite remember things and we failed our mission, we now have to repeat and repeat and repeat until we figure it out. I mean, yeah. yeah that makes and, that, sense. and I just feel like, the irony of this episode is fucking weird. I, it is just because it, and more details are going to be revealed in the next episode. I promise you it's going to be, it's going to kind of be ridiculous, but it, I don't know. Like for me, this is one of the episodes that I kind of feel like we need this. Because we have kind of been hard on ourselves lately. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it, we, we need to get back to just having fun again. 2024 has been rough. It has been rough. It, it's been it's been not only like, I know you guys kind of hear about the podcast side of things, but the personal lives have been kind of fucking sh- shit lately too. And that affects us and everything else. And I know we complain sometimes and we shouldn't, blah, 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 blah. But I I just feel so much relevance in this in this episode. Yeah. It is it is bizarre. Not to mention, how many times have you guys heard we talk about like about about making contact, about thinking about meditating, about doing this, about doing that, and then come to find out you read this shit and that that's a one way ticket. Oh yeah, to making contact. Yep, hundred percent. I feel like I feel like there's so much so much to that. So much to to the consciousness as a whole when it comes to furthering ourselves and yeah. making contact and shit. Yeah, and in the next episode we get into it. We get into the harvest. We get into wanderers. We get into fucking cataclysms and, and fucking people describing life on other planets. <laughs> Fuck yes. And they are complete dude, they're completely different people. Describe and the somehow thing. they their stories intertwine oh. with each other. Machine elves, bro. How the fuck does that happen? Machine elves. How I'm does that happen? You. It's crazy. But it like I don't I don't know. Just the, the overall of this episode is an entry episode. It may not have been the greatest on the planet, but you gotta For, you lay the groundwork. It it fucking hit me. It hit me when I was doing all this because I'm like, what the? What are the? I, like he he's literally talking about. You gotta pay attention to the signs that are put out there. Like nobody's gonna hold your hand. You gotta figure it out. Yep. And we we talk about that shit all the time. Yep. Like I all said, the time. It's sometimes it's just there's there are no consequences there are no synchronicities it's the phenomena acknowledging you acknowledging the phenomena and I I have one dude well I hundred percent believe that yeah, I really especially, do like look at the way the last two series that you put together fell into your lap I don't it's so weird dude yeah it you is had no so intention weird. no intention on even even picking up that book no no and I then, wanted a different one and I just I was for what for whatever reason it wasn't letting me get it. And I was like, well, fuck it. I'll just get this book. I mean, it's off Amazon. What book can't you get off fucking yeah, Amazon? It's weird. It's weird. You know? 
Happy little accidents. It's it's fucking bizarre. And like I said, I came out of that, and sometimes I'm not trying to do a, a big fucking series, but I'm like, you know what? what whatever. I'm just going to do it. Send it. Jump into it, and I'm like, wait a minute. This is way too weird. Way too weird to not at least bring it up. And it, it was strange. I do remember seeing I can't remember who it was. Kept saying Kyle's evolving. Kyle's yeah. Kyle's evolving. And it's, I don't know. It just feels, it, it feels... Not only does it feel like we were supposed to do this right now, but it also kind of semi feels personal. Almost, like, almost like whenever I was asking for protection, and then like, then magically, Ed and April were like, "Hey, Kyle, you guys want to like come to the spirit conference?" and yeah. and we're like, "Cool, yeah, bet, whatever." And then we show up, and it's all about it's all protection. Protection. Yeah. It's just everywhere. It is. That is weird. And it's just I don't know, man. It. I really do think. That when you put that shit out there, it gets caught and brought back. I really do. I believe it. I absolutely believe it. Yeah. That is. I mean, that is pretty awesome. I think it's going to be a good series. I think it's going to touch a lot of people and really make people wonder about things. I never... It did get my wheels turning in the beginning when he was... When he essentially in a roundabout way is kind of open to the fact that the phenomenon is all connected. Yeah. Or he's like, I'm trying to figure out a way to make connections with extraterrestrials. My first go-to is going to be this already kind of cemented in uh, source of making contact with a, a different aspect of the phenomenon, but via seances. Yeah. Like that was, I, I putting that together is, was interesting. Well, and then the, the beckoning of that is good. Is going to be between the way ghosts materialize and dematerialize versus yeah. the UFO materializes and dematerializes. Yeah. It's really, I mean, essentially it's, it's the, the, the foundation of the CE5 movement. Oh, I agree with that. Absolutely. You know, it may even be like literally directly connected as yeah. well. Yeah, I it mean, very well could be. Because like, because now you've got you've got guys like Greer and all kinds of people steady manifesting UFOs, or in that's that's what they're putting out. Right, and it makes you wonder if they are actually manifesting UFOs. Yeah. Are they having contact as well that they're not sharing? Yeah, it's weird because it it's. Like by Hatan and the in this confederation of planets, that is their that is their intent tenfold. They definitely want to do this. They definitely want to make contact with people who are wanting it. And it seems to be almost that easy. You just gotta really want to make contact with them and they're like, Hey, what's up? That We're gonna does, start talking. That and that, that it's fucking weird to think about. It's uh, my brain immediately, like you said, goes back to Saturn. Oh, goes yeah. back to Black Cube. Because that dude wanted to make contact really, really fucking bad. And yep. the dude he was talking to didn't want any part of it. But there are other things out there listening. Yeah. Especially when you're sending it out there. Like, I feel like <sighs> some people get to a certain point of desperation where they're just sending it. Like, I'd somebody acknowledge what I'm putting out there. And I feel like there are predatory entities out there, bottom dwellers, bottom feeders that are just waiting. I think that just happens. Just waiting to pick at, at anything that they can get their hands on before the message makes it to who it's supposed to get to. I 100% think that does happen. Yeah. I really do. I Because there, there always has to be... Uh, a plus and a minus situation, like yin and yang, you know, light that, I mean, and dark. Think thinking on that, that could even be like, that could be the the foundation of demonic possession. You know, it very sending, well could be sending it out there, sending stuff out there, and these whatever these things are, these entities, these these malevolent entities are just waiting, just waiting. As soon as you they know, as soon as they see a little a little bit of bait. They're like, swoop. And speaking of, I'll give this 
because of the way you worded that, I, I'll give I'll give you guys this from the next episode. There's a situation where I told you how these people are describing a place, and they're it all intertwines with each other. This guy is in particular speaking about a place of worship, and he's inside, and it's lit, but he can't tell where it's lit from. And there are no shadows within this 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 temple. That's so it's almost like the air is illuminating itself somehow because there's zero shadow. Where did we hear that before? I don't know. But that's not the weird thing. The weird thing is, is that he started hearing music, and he describes it as praise. Right? He's like it. It just sounds like pure praise to me. But the fucked up thing is, is that. The women describe it too, and they visualize it, but it's not by musicians. They see it essentially sparking in the air. That's weird. And it, the thought crossed my mind is the way by the way he describes it, and then the way they describe it. What if it is that? What if it is people? Zipping their shit, their praise out into the universe, and that's the physical manifestation of it. That's that's in my in my brain. I think that's why Earth gets so much attention. You have seven billion people on the planet struggling, suffering, trying, just trying to find a reason. And they're consistently putting it all out there. Which shooting it off into the ether. Which, now that you say that, to a degree, would actually make sense for others like Hatan, if they are good, to come in and try to intervene. Hundred percent. Be not 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 in the aspect of being bad, but they could see that we are trapped in this 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 cycle because you you now we there there has been suffering there has been all these horrible things and we've put it out and these leeches have just swarmed us yep and entities like a ton who would be good they would be the light to the situation or like hey guys like because it, he I'm I'm not I'm not ex- uh, exaggerating he overly focuses on love you guys need to fucking focus on love and and the intention of things, and you need to meditate, and you need to do this, and everything is just positive, 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 positive. And like we talked about, there there has to be a yin, yin and yang. So for them negative thoughts that you're punching out there, that's going somewhere. Yep, yep. You and I mean, you put you throw blood in the water, you're gonna get. People that try to rescue you, and you're also going to get sharks. Yep. I do. I, I agree with that. I think that makes sense. Yeah. I think it makes sense. Not to mention it kind of defines his, like, life raft analogy he was using earlier. You know? Because yeah. he describes the, the the tragic event, and then we're, we're throwing lifelines out there, kind of. Yeah. Because so far, by reading it, it does feel like there's a lot more that he's foreshadowing. In these in these pair, like I just feel like he's kind of buttering you up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, just lead. Yeah, so I was I was feeling that too. Like he's just kind of leading you in. Like, yeah, he's just dangling the carrot just enough for you to be like, "Ooh, this is interesting. Yeah. I want to learn more." Yeah, and I feel like I feel like eventually the hammer is gonna drop. He's gonna be like, "So, this is the bad part." Right. <laughs> yeah, I do kind of feel that. Yeah, it may not be like ultimately bad, but I do feel like there's gonna be some fucked up news come. It is it is strange how these things how like I'll forever be impressed by that. These episodes come come into play. I will forever be impressed by that. It's interesting. Because I we've gone over it a million times. We pick things at such randomization yeah. that there's no possible way me and Steve are planning any of this shit. No fucking way. Oh, I did an episode on the Michelin man last yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it is so, we, like our style is so random. It doesn't it doesn't make sense that 
consistently when we want to, we find things that just kind of click into place as we go. Boop, doop, 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 yeah. Doop. Like I said, I've made the analogy a million times. Like we are, we are working on a hundred thousand piece puzzle. Yeah. And we're getting it one piece at a time. And I think eventually <clears throat> it's going to make sense. And I think on top of all that, and it, I'm not, I'm not in any way, shape, or form throwing shade, but I do think that, like, w- with that Michelin Man episode, I think there are times when, when life, for and it happens to both of us. I, I 100% believe this, and I'll, I'll forever stand on that. Where life kind of uh, curves us, so to speak, almost like here's the phenomenon. Oh, this week, me and Steve are, are plugged into the phenomenon. We're on it, baby. And then something happens in my life, and I pull, I pull, I disconnect. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And so the episode or analogies or whatever doesn't quite fit this overarching narrative we have. You know what yeah. I mean? And then some, and then two weeks later, I plug back in and I'm like, guys, check this shit out. Like, this is, this is literally what we was talking about. And you know even, what I mean? And even on the like, even on our one-off episodes, sometimes we'll circle back. Uh, not necessarily circle back, but sometimes we'll be doing an episode. And something from these weird-ass one-offs that don't make any sense at the time will come back into play. Oh, I do like that. And you're like... That is a good point. Fuck? Maybe, we, maybe we're not quite disconnected. Maybe, what I don't know. Fuck? That is fucking weird, yeah. though. I do feel that. Yeah. I do feel that. Yeah. I do feel like... It's a cool journey, folks. <laughs> I actually do feel like, to a varying degree, we we have this TV show that each episode is different, except there is an overarching <laughs> main plot that we we kind of acknowledge, but we're not really aware of, even though we kind of are. Yes, yeah, so we're. You know what I mean? On on the intergalactic Truman Show right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I do, I do feel that too. Because sometimes, sometimes shit connects and just makes sense, and other times you're just like, I don't know. I, I love know. the thought that we could have the Michelin Man episode, and it seemingly be not related to fuck all, and then three months down the road, we're like, oh shit, that's where that piece goes. Hatan shows up and he's in a giant fucking rubber <laughs> rubber tire suit. I fucking hope so. Like, well, that tracks. <laughs> He's like, I heard you guys' episode. I figured I'd show up like this. <laughs> yeah, it was sick. <laughs> I'd be like, cool, dude. I'm going to play some Xbox. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Hollow Cult, thanks for hanging out with us on this Monday. Um, I'm excited to get into to the rest of this and see where the connections make. Kyle sent us some little teasers, so it's kind of got my brain turning. Uh, again, thanks for hanging out with us. Hope everybody has a good work week. As much as possible, saying that out loud doesn't feel right, but make of it what you can. And um, until we meet again, so check us out on all our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, you know the deal. While you're out there, stay safe, stay weird, and always keep your mind open as to the connections between the phenomena. The puzzle pieces are out there. We just got to put them together. <laughs>